Hello. Welcome to the tour of the skull. Um, I'm going to start going over the bone list of the cranial bones. So the skull is made up of the cranium, which is like the brain case. All these kind of big, round, flat bones here at the top. And then we have the facial bones, which are these ones right here. Okay, so I'm gonna go over the cranial bones first and then we'll go over the facial bones. So this is just going right in line with your bone list. So we have a frontal bone, which is the orange one here. Try to keep centered in the, the camera. So the frontal bone has one marking on it called the supraorbital foramen, sometimes called the supraorbital notch, which is this kind of divot right here. And you can actually feel your own supraorbital notches if you run your finger or your thumb right above your orbit. You can kind of feel a little dent right there. The next bone is your parietal bones. So these are the colored green ones here on the skull. So they make up a big portion of the top part of the skull. Okay. Then we have a temporal bone and I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that off anyways. <laughs> it just happened to fall off. So the temporal bone, I'm gonna take the mandible off too, just because I have a feeling it's gonna fall off. So the temporal bone in this model is painted yellow and it's got quite a few markings on it. So the first marking is called the squamous region, which is in contrast to the petrous region. So we know the word squamous means flat, right? So the flat part of the temporal bone is right here on these sides, okay? So this is the squamous region and petrous means like rock or like rocky. So all of this bumpy part inside and out like right where my thumb is, that's all the petrous part. And then where I'm pinching with my thumb and forefinger, that's the squamous part or region, okay? Next, we have the zygomatic process, which is this right here, because it reaches out towards the zygomatic bone, which is this light green one. So here's your zygomatic process. Then we have a fossa called the mandibular fossa. So putting this upside down, Putting the mandible back on, okay, right here, we can see right here where the mandible fits into this nice dent. That is the mandibular fossa, okay, right there. Then we have the mastoid process, which is this big bump right here. You can feel it right behind your ear, a little bit posterior to your ear. And then a little bit inward here, a little bit more medial, we have this really pointy one here. This is called the styloid process. And then we have this opening here, it's called the external acoustic meatus. You might also see it as the auditory canal. Either of those are fine. So external acoustic meatus, external auditory canal, either one of those is fine, right? So those are your markings of the temporal bone. The next one is the sphenoid bone. That's this dark kind of turquoisey green one here inside. Um, we're going to see some of the markings internally and some of the markings externally. So the first two are the wings. We have greater wings and lesser wings. So I know this is a little bit dark. Let me see if I can zoom in some. So these two right here, if I turn it sideways, they kind of look like a little shelf almost like a wing, that's why it's called wings. So these are the lesser wings right here. One here, one here. And then these down here are the greater wings and you can actually see the external surface of the greater wings right here. So kind of in between the temporal bone, the zygomatic bone and the frontal bone. So this is the external view of the greater wing and here's the internal view of the greater wing. So lesser wing, greater wing. Okay. The next marking is um, a marking with its own marking, if you will. So we have this middle structure here is called the cella tersica. I'm going to see it at an angle. This right here, this bump and this bump collectively is called the cella tersica. And then the little dent inside, like right where my finger is resting, this is called the hypophyseal fossa. Okay, so we have the cella tersica in between the lesser wings and the hypophyseal fossa right there. That is actually named after the gland that sits in that little pocket. That is where your pituitary gland sits. Another name for pituitary gland is hypothesis. Not hypothesis, hypothesis with a pH, okay? 
All right, and then the next one, we're gonna go to the back and underside of our skull to look at what's called the pterygoid processes. Pterygoid with a silent P, They're these guys right here. So those are the pterygoid processes from the side. We can see them kind of coming straight down. Kind of they go right up against the backside of the um, maxilla here. That's a pterygoid processes. Then we're gonna have lots of holes. Okay, so I have a little pointer here to help me out. So if we look down the eyeball, in the eye hole, we have what is called um, the superior orbital fissure. So it is this opening right here that I'm sticking the pipette through. And if I go to the other side, kind of right underneath that lesser wing. So that is the superior orbital fissure. And then here it is on the other side. Okay, it's kind of like a teardrop shape. If I let some of the chair color come through right there. All right, so then we have three foremen that are, I wonder if I can put the paper, if the white underneath will show the holes a little bit better. So this guy here is called the foreman spinosum. I don't know if you can see it. Right there. You can't see the white through it, but there's a hole there. You'll see it better when you get into lab and get your hands on a skull. And then we have the foreman um, oval right here, a little bit bigger. And then the foreman rotundum is this little round one. Oh, it's really hard to see, sorry guys. Kind of right here. So here's your um, superior orbital fissure and then right below it, there's going to be the foreman rotundum, foreman oval, and then a tiny little one called foreman spinosum. You're gonna have to see that either in pictures or when you get your hands on it. because It's hard to see with that dark green color. Okay. And then we have the optic canal. So right here, let's see if I can turn it. Oh, there we go. And it froze. And we're back. Okay, so right there, that perfectly circular hole right next to that lesser wing, this is the optic canal or optic foramen. And if we look deep in our eyeballs, socket there, we can see that nice perfect circle right there, right next to that superior orbital foramen. Okay, so lots of holes in the sphenoid bone. Okay, so that's what we just covered were all of those markings here on the sphenoid bone. Next, we're gonna go to the ethmoid bone. The ethmoid bone in this model is a brown guy right here kind of embedded in between parts of the frontal bone. It's anterior to the sphenoid bone. So we can see a couple markings here. We already see a little bit of it in the orbit, right here, it's that dark brown. And then we'll get to see some of it in the eye, uh, in the nasal cavity here. Again, there's some shadows, it's gonna be a little bit hard. So you wanna make sure to see that with your own models in lab. So the first two are the markings that you can see in the superior kind of um, with the, the cranial cap off. So this middle bump right here is called the Christa Gali. So I can't see it. So this structure right here is a Christa Gali. And then on either side of the Christa Gali is a cribriform plate. So right here and right here. Christa Gali in the middle, cribriform plate on either side. And then in the nasal cavity, we have this middle line right here. You'd see it if you're when you look at the skull in lab. It'll be a perpendicular um, plate of bone coming straight down, and that is actually called the perpendicular plate. And then on either side of the perpendicular plate, we have these little side bumps that kind of are sticking out. I'm point, pointing to one right here, and then the other one is right here. So this is called the middle nasal conch. Also associated with ethmoid bone is a superior nasal conch, but we can't see that on our model. So you do need to know that it's a marking of the ethmoid bone, but we can't identify it on any of our ethmoid bone models. Okay. All right, so that's the ethmoid bone. Um, the last bone in our cranium is the occipital bone, which is this red one down here, kind of on the backside of our skull. 
the occipital bone has a couple markings. So we have this big foramen here is called the foramen magnum. Foramen means whole, so that's where the spinal cord exits um, from the brain. And then either side, we have what are called occipital condyles, right? So hopefully you're learning condyles are um, a articular surface, okay? So occipital condyles, foramen magnum. And then lastly, we have this bump here, kind of the paint's worn off of it. This is called the external occipital protuberance. Okay, external, you can feel it too. So everybody can probably feel their external occipital protuberance there. So that red bone is the occipital bone, All right? So that's the bones of the skull, um, or sorry, the cranial bones, frontal, parietal, temporal, sphenoid, ethmoid, and occipital. And then all the markings we just went through. So next we're going to take a look at the facial bones, okay? So the first one is the maxilla. That's this light blue one. So the maxilla is your upper jaw bone. It actually goes all the way up and be, creates part of your um, nose structure here and even um, part of your inferior part of your orbit of your eye socket. So we have alveolar margin. So um, the margin, the alveolar margin is just this line here where the teeth kind of um, come into the bone, this margin. Margin kind of means line or border in bone talk. If we look underneath, there's kind of a flat area right here. This is part of your hard palate. This is called the palatine process. Palatine process, because this is the palatine bone, the other part of your hard palate. Palatine process of the maxilla connects to the palatine bone. And then lastly, we have some more foramen. So these holes here, right below the orbits, infraorbital foramen, right? We had a supraorbital foramen here on the frontal bone, infraorbital foramen here on the maxilla. That's your maxilla. Um, and then we have the palatine bone, which is this kind of reddish orange one here on this model. So this flat part of the palatine bone is called the horizontal plate, okay? So here's the palatine process of the maxilla. Here's a horizontal plate of the palatine bone. And if we kind of see it a little bit, you'll have to look better in lab, but there's a little vertical um, ridge right here. And that is um, the hooks to the vomer. And, oh gosh, you may or may not be able to see it. You can kind of see it. Um, so if I can point to it right there, these side walls, are the vertical plates of the palatine bone, right there. Okay. So that's your palatine bone. Horizontal plate here, vertical plate, the side walls, kind of deep in that area. All right, next is the zygomatic bone. This green one here, it's your cheekbones. These guys right here. Um, no marking associated with the zygomatic bone. The next is your lacrimal. That's this little yellow rectangular looking bone here. Um, and it's got a dent right here and it's called the lacrimal fossa. That kind of helps go into the lacrimal foramen, which is not on your list, which is your tear drainage pathways. All right, and then we have our nasal bone, which is this dark blue, one on each side. And our vomer, which is this kind of really a sharp angular looking bone here, it articulates with the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone anteriorly. And then posteriorly, you can see it kind of sitting um, atop or just below, sorry, the sphenoid bone, and then articulating with the palatine bone here on the back side. It's like a big wedge shaped bone. And then lastly, not lastly, sorry, um, we have inferior nasal conch. So if you remember looking in the nose hole, we saw the middle nasal conch associated with the ethmoid bone. It was a marking on the ethmoid bone. The inferior nasal conch are their own sets of bones. Right? They're part of the facial bone collection. And then our last bone of the skull or the facial bones is the mandible. So this is our lower jaw bone, so it would sit like this, okay? Happy Halloween. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna take a look at the mandible here all by itself. So we have kind of the body, which is from the angle, 
This is the mandibular ingle. So all of this is the body. It's kind of like your chin. All of this stuff is your mandibular body. Um, and then here's the angle. And then all of this that kind of branches up towards the joint with your um, temporal bone is the ramus. So all of this is the ramus, angle, body. Okay. Um, there's also an alveolar margin, same as on the maxilla. So it's just a line of where the teeth fit in. Um, mandibular condyle is this guy right here, or condylar process. Either one of those are fine. And then this kind of wedgy looking thing here is called the coronoid process, right? So condylar process, coronoid process. And then we finish off with a couple of holes. We have the mental foramen here, right? Because this is our mentis. That was our mental region of our body. So mental foramen is on the uh, anterior surface. And then back behind in that ramus area, those are the mandibular foramen. Right, so this is the inside view of the mandible, and we can see the mandibular form in there. Okay, so that wraps up all of the bone names and markings of the skull. Okay, put him back together, him or her. There you go. So in the bone list, there's a hyoid bone. I'm gonna have to show that to you in lab because I don't have a hyoid bone here with me at home. Um, I will, I can go over the sutures since I have the skull here. So the sutures are these seams um, of where the skull bones come together. So this middle one that separates the parietal bones is called the sagittal suture because it's on that sagittal plane right here. This uh, one here between the frontal and parietal bones is the coronal or frontal suture, which is nice because it matches that um, coronal plane. And then we have the squamosal suture which runs on that squamosal region of the temporal bone, so that's kind of nice. And last one is called the lambdoid suture, which is this guy right here, which separates the two parietal bones from the occipital bone. There's more sutures, but we're only gonna have you learn those four, okay? Um, the sinuses are just, you just need to know that which bones are in. So we have sinuses, which are hollow spaces inside the frontal bone, right here above your eyebrows, the maxillary bone right here, kind of in your upper teeth, the sphenoid and the ethmoid, which are deep, um, kind of in the middle of your head behind your bridge of your nose. And then lastly, I wanted to um, cover the fontanelles. So this is the fetal skull, little baby skull. Um, babies are born with their skulls not completely fused. So what we have instead of a completely fused skull is we have these regions of soft connective tissue, like a dermis. Remember these are, not remember, but you will be learning in chapter six, dermal bones. So bones that are formed um, from tissue that resembles dermis before they turn into bone. So we have these unossified regions. So as the baby's brain is growing in the first couple of years of life, there's some flexibility there. It also allows for flexibility during delivery as the, the skull can be a little bit compressed as it's going through the birth canal. So there's four fontanelles or four fontanelle names, six total. Um, we have the anterior or frontal fontanelle. We have the posterior or occipital front, uh, fontanelle. And we have two on each side. We have the anterolateral or sphenoid, and we have the posterolateral or mastoid. Okay, so we have two fontanelles on each side, and then two on the top, one anterior and one posterior. All right, that wraps it up. And I've already posted the videos for the rest of the boneless. So I was just waiting to get that colored skull home so I could go over those parts a little bit easier. All right, so good luck. I hope you have a good start um, with your bone list and I will see you in lab next week. Bye.